ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cooped Up Podcast. The podcast that is running late for school, so has to run out of the house with toast in its mouth. By the way, much harder than it uh, looks and sounds. As always, folks, uh, my name is Koopa, and each week I sit down with one of my friends, and we talk about all the happenings of pop culture and whatever the heck we happen to be watching. This week's folks, I have a phenomenal guest for you this week. Um, she is an amiibo artist, a Super Smash Bros. competitor, and uh, one of my uh, dearest friends this corner of the internet. Um, I This has been a long time coming. Uh, I'm so excited to sit down with the wonderful, give a warm, cooped up welcome to Okami Swan. Did I do Did I do it right? Did I do it right? Close enough, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I've watched enough One Piece. I get it. I understand. <laughs> Rachel, how are you? I am doing great today. How about you, Coops? I'm great. I'm so excited to sit down and, and chat with you. Um, it's been a minute since we've seen each other. And again, I got I to gotta pay homage to the gimmick and i'm not even gonna pretend you know uh you know I, it's we're, we're friends i, I we're, we're 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 very much friends you've met my parents so you absolutely you, you fall into friend territory um and <laughs> it, it, i can always and i can always like tell the the foundation of a friendship is great because i really don't remember like when we became like friends friends i just feel like we've always been like homies like, do you have, Absolutely. like, a memory? Because I, I, I can't think of a, a good entry point. Hell no, dude. I can't remember anything past, like, <laughs> maybe three days ago. I don't, I don't remember anything. That's it's always valid. been sick and easy and cool, so. That's valid. That That's fun. <laughs> and, yeah, like, you know, we're, we're both, uh, you know, we both, uh, you know, take uh, take stance in the Super Smash Brothers community. Um you know we've we've been uh tournament goers for a long time and you know, our our friend group spans you know mutual people and we just kind of started hanging out and you know frequenting the, the, the same airwaves and yeah you know we hang out hang out a lot you've been uh, to my neck of the woods a lot i've been in your neck of the woods a lot and yep you know, you're just it's just cool people absolutely honestly it's, it's it's hard to find those uh in in, in this uh, in this day and age but uh yeah you know we're uh we're here and, uh, you know, I, I really uh, am excited for this week's episode because I get to finally, like, you know, unload, like, take a notch out of my belt and just, like, you know, an unearth uh, something I've been wanting to talk about for a while on this podcast. And that is uh, the subject of anime. Now, Rachel, um, are you familiar with what anime is? A little bit. Um like vaguely. <laughs> um, I hope you guys are ready for maybe like a seven and a half hour long podcast episode because I actually don't shut up about anime. So um, it was made a very bad mistake by inviting me on. You know what? <laughs> I'm here for it. Listen, the Snyder Cut can be four hours. We can talk about anime for seven hours. And that's partially why I, you know, when I've, you know, was looking for my avenues to kind of just like sit down and talk about this. I was like, you know, what's a what's a good angle of approach for this? And I tried to find this this tweet desperately uh, when I was uh, in preparation for this podcast, but it was like this weird like gatekeepy tweet being like, "Oh, if you like only grew up watching like Dragon Ball Z or like Sailor Moon and stuff like that, like you don't really watch anime and stuff mm -hmm. like that." And like that kind of made the the rounds on social media for a couple days, and I was like, "Ooh, that's it. That's my in." And I was like, yeah. "Who could I think of that like can talk about anime for hours on end?" And won't be bored about it. And you were the first person that came to my mind. This chatterbox right here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I I saw not only that kind of tweet, but I see a lot of tweets in that same vein. They circulate around Twitter and social media pretty frequently, um, especially in this day and age. And they are the most ridiculous tweets i have ever seen <laughs> like um i think that this day and age um anime is in one of its giant cultural waves like it's just absolutely plowing through and invading every facet of of pop culture and it's in the best way possible. No, um, I, I, I totally I totally agree with you on that. And um it's like I I have this conversation with like 
you know, people like every now and then where like, um, you know, I think back because, you know, we're both in the same age bracket. So like we yeah. we've we've grown up in a time where like access to anime was was limited to like yes. whatever was on yes. your screen and like, you know, on, you know, whether it be on like Cartoon Network or like the, the, the shittiest, crappiest, sketchiest <laughs> websites ever. I'm talking separate link for three parts to each episode of whatever you yep. want to watch. Yep. Oh, absolutely. man. <laughs> absolutely. And and you know what? People don't realize how insane it is that anime is, is as accessible as it is the, like this day. Not only anime, but manga, too. Um, you have literal streaming services dedicated to just anime. That yeah. is insane to me. That is insane and awesome. Like, not only do you have Crunchyroll, uh, which is obviously the forerunner for uh, streaming services, you have Funimation has their own app, you have anime on Hulu, you have anime on Netflix, you have anime on Amazon, you have it everywhere. And and that was not how we grew up. <laughs> no, no, that it was, was not, not how we grew up. Like, and, I... and Keep, you, keep, keep going keep going oh i was just gonna say when you see these tweets like like the one you mentioned saying you know you're only a real fan if you grew up watching dragon ball and sailor moon and um whatever Th that is so ridiculous because <laughs> it, it really is it's like there there is a chance that anyone anyone can just pop on a netflix has never seen an anime in their life, and they have at their their fingertips, you know, hundreds of titles to choose from. They don't yeah. have to have grown up with that. They can just start, and that is awesome. That is so cool. Like, and it's not <laughs> even just new stuff. It's old stuff. It doesn't matter. Say, say you didn't watch Dragon Ball growing up. Guess what? If you want to watch it now, it's there. It's at your fingertips. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's there's no need for that. Like nasty attitude towards it yeah and... no, i i totally agree with you um mm -hmm. like it's it's i definitely felt like a, a pang of nostalgia when like you brought up the, the websites we'd have to like surf through <laughs> yeah. to like find like oh my like uh like you know the, the newest like dubbed episode you know subbed episode of naruto yeah. and like you have to watch it in like <laughs> in like eight minute parts and like you <laughs> might get a virus if you click on this link yes. and then you're gonna get grounded for a month is that just me yes. and my projecting probably no <laughs> i definitely messed up a couple uh family pcs on those anime sites like <laughs> um, for sure or like you know it, it's ridiculous or yeah you have to stay up until 2 a.m on toonami you know, if you even had cable, I didn't have cable for most of my childhood. So like, I wasn't lucky enough to watch stuff like that. Uh, I had to catch it at a friend's house. And like, even then, it's whatever they're playing, you know, you can't on demand and stuff didn't work back then there was no go back and watch previous episodes. It's whatever was playing at the time or, or Saturday morning cartoons. Like, yeah, like, it's it's so it, it's it's just crazy to me that people can look at how I can w walk into my store that I work at. I work at a bookstore um, and I have m shelf upon shelf upon shelf of manga to pick from. And that ranges from super old manga like Akira and Berserk and JoJo's to stuff that's coming out like by the month. I have the newest Jujutsu Kaisen. I have the newest Demon Slayer there. Like I, it's, it's there and it sells like hotcakes. Like I am constantly re like filling those shelves. It's it it sells so well. It's it's there and people and kids are are eating it up. Like it's the coolest thing that could have happened to anime genuinely. No, I I 100% agree. And I'm just, so we're going to set the table for you guys today. Uh, before me and Rachel uh, jump off the deep end and start drowning in 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 our <laughs> in our favorite things, so this is an idea for you know, and I might have other podcasts like this for other, you know, subject material and anime. I feel like was just the easiest way to go with it because there's there's so much to talk about. So, uh, me and Rachel have devised a a, a recommend, uh, you know, it's a, a part our favorite shows and part shows that we'd also recommend because we like them so much, and 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 whatnot. So. You know, I have a list of five. Rachel has a list of five, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go off back and forth. You know, uh, 
you know, give give you the show, give you some reasons why we like it, give you a, a quip, a, a quip, oof, boy, I can't talk today, a quick <laughs> synopsis of, like, you know, what the show is, if it interests you, and, you know, I've even included in some of my stuff, like, where you can find it, because, you know, like, like Rachel just mentioned, um, you... There, there are so many places like now that you can you can just watch anime. I thought it was cool for the first time, you know, when I was able to turn on Netflix and I was like, "There's an anime section here. What? That's wild yeah. to me. It blew my fucking mind." Absolutely, yeah. But, um, Dude, but, I used to have to buy DVDs if I wanted to watch a full <laughs> series. Isn't like I have I have like VHS episodes of Pokemon where it's like <laughs> yeah, four wait, episodes. Same time, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, you yeah. literally had to buy a VHS that had four episodes on it, and <laughs> like it's I can just turn on Netflix and boom, I have like eight Pokemon seasons there, easy peasy. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> wild. Um, so but b- before we get into that though, you know, like I said, we we are 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 products of the of the late '90s and early 2000s. You know, in that first real anime boom, you know, when anime was you know uh, just uh, blossoming into you know, what it is today. So, uh, and I've always been curious about this because I don't know if I've ever asked you this question as, as one of your friends, but like where, what are some of your earliest memories with anime? Do you remember when you like first oh. really got like interested in anime? Yeah, actually. So, um, as Koopa just said, being, um, someone who I was born in 1994, um, which was directly after the first technical wave of anime in the west um so right when i was like reaching uh actual consciousness <laughs> around the ages of like <laughs> four and five um i was very lucky to be a kid in the age of the second wave of of anime in the west which was your super old school shonens you had pokemon which was absolutely taking over the world at that point um, you have Dragon Ball, you have Sailor Moon, and some of my earliest, uh, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Some of my earliest memories are just watching um, Sailor Moon, easily one of my favorites from the from the beginning. Dragon Ball, um, I actually had uh, Kiki's Delivery Service on uh, VHS. Uh, um, yes. That was, yeah, that was like right way back um, when Disney first acquired studio ghibli so there was like vhs's of all these old ghibli movies um so i had kiki's delivery service that was a favorite of mine back then um i remember the first time i watched spirited away i was absolutely mind blown (laughs) by it (laughs) um like and that's where it really started and it seems weird to say and that's where a lot of these kind of nasty tweets come from because like those liking anime back then it wasn't this like weird separate genre. It was just meshed in with normal Saturday morning cartoons. So it wasn't like you were watching this separate thing. You know, it was just in the lineup of cartoons that you watched. So there's a lot of kids that watched these kind of things and didn't even like realize it was like a a different kind of animation, you know? Yeah. So there's tons of kids our age that that even if they're not into anime now, watched those things growing up, which I'm sure you did too. What were yeah. some of your first? Ooh, okay. No, that's a I I wholeheartedly agree with you. So like, you know, uh, I was born the same year as you, so we are, you know, we we are kindred spirits in 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 that regard. Where we, you know we both got to grow up in like, you know, the second big boom of anime, mm-hmm. and you know, some of my earliest memories um, that I can think of where uh, you know uh, was was with a lot of those same shows. You know, I remember. You know, I still remember that, you know, I'd get home from school at three o'clock. Pokemon would be on at four. Absolutely. Uh, and yep. stuff like that. You know, I would uh, and, you know, I, I would. And then I started like branching out into like, you know, other shows because I started, you know, I was like, oh, I like Pokemon. And I'm like, there's other shows that are like this. Like what? <laughs> That's crazy. And my earliest memory of that is that and I told this on another podcast, but I'll tell it again because it's great, is that. Uh, my dad used uh, was a, an IT uh, support tech for forty years at his old job, and oh, wow. he'd he'd have to work on Saturdays in in Manhattan, and mm-hmm. you know my mom uh, uh, during parts of the year would also have to work on Saturdays, and you know I'm a I'm a five year old you know six year old kid they can't just leave me at home by myself I would I would suffer and die, <laughs> um, so my dad would take me into work with him in the morning and. He would sit me in this like corner of this like big computer lab with like, all these like giant like you know PCs and stuff with this little like black and white tube TV, 
And I'd be up so early enough in the morning, I would watch shows like Card Captors and stuff on Saturday oh, mornings. Yes. So, like, some of my earliest memories uh, are with shows like Card Captors and Sailor Moon and and Dragon Ball uh, growing up. Um, and then yeah. I started branching out into, you know, stuff on Toonami. I still remember um, to this day uh, the Scholastic Books Fair. Uh, Absolutely. When I was a kid, yep, you yeah. be, I, yep, you could. I that's where I got bought my first volume of Shonen Jump. I got the one with the blue eyes white dragon card in it. Oh I still, my gosh! I, I, <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> yep, I still remember it. I might still have it in my room. I don't. I don't think I ever threw those out. Um, I yeah, but like that's you know where I learned about you know like manga for the first time, and then you know uh, then Toonami started you know picking up with like the shows. Mm -hmm. The, the, the craziest thing to me was the day where, you know, uh, there'd be, like, shows that were on, you know, like we said, like, late at night on, like, uh, Adult Swim and stuff like that. Yeah, and, like, like I never Trigun. Be able to, and, yeah, like, like Trigun. Oh, like, absolutely, yeah. You know, Cowboy Bebop, Yu Yu Hakusho, yep. and, like, all those older shows. And, like, then they started transitioning those shows into, like, the afternoon blocks. So, like, that's how I, like, started watching shows, like, you know, Mobile Suit Gundam and, like, all these, like, other, like, things like that. So, like, those are some of my earliest memories with anime. And then, like, you know, as I've grown with the times, you know, I've I've uh, picked up, you know, things on, like, Netflix and stuff like that. And then I discovered the convention scene. And it's all just been downhill and money poured into a hobby <laughs> yeah. that I, I truly cannot afford any more than that. But, yeah, that's, like, I some totally of my understand. earliest memories. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember, too, um, so one of my favorite series of all time is Naruto. Um and I know a lot of people these days kind of scoff at the the old big three being Bleach, One Piece, and Naruto. Um, but like to kids our age, like that was that's like what we grew up with. Truly, what we grew up with with these characters aging at the same time as us, and and you know us seeing the completion of these series. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember being in I believe it was like fourth grade or fifth grade. And the tuning exams were on through for Naruto, and my friends and I would all gather over, um, throw on Cartoon Network, watch the tuning exams. Like it, it, it's just stayed with these for so long from those tiny little grassroots like beginnings, and watching, catching those random shows in the morning, and watching Toonami at night. Uh, you know, um, everyone makes the joke of uh, when you wake up at three a.m. to the Inuyasha ending, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> playing yeah. super loud. Love that. That's exactly like that. That rings so nostalgic for me. <laughs> That's amazing. And it's all, it's funny you mentioned the tuning exams because I did the same exact thing with my neighbor for like Hell yeah. for yeah. years. Um but um and I I don't know if I've ever even told you this, but one of my uh like one of the rungs that I hang my nerd hat on sometimes is that one <laughs> summer in like I think it was like the sixth or seventh grade, it was uh over over summer break and I had um I think it was when like Naruto was like in like their like in between phases and stuff like that, like or whatever. And there was just like 300 episodes of filler and whatever from the original series, like before it like, you know, there, yeah, I, I at, forgot at what point it ended. At, but... at the very end of the Sasuke retrieval arc, there's I think it's 125 or 128 episodes straight of filler. <laughs> yep. And I spent an entire summer watching every single episode. Uh, amazing. Loki, yep. some of that filler is pretty good, if I'm going to be honest. I like, uh, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like weird. Like, I don't, <laughs> I, and I didn't understand the concept of what filler was back then. I'm yeah. just like, what do you mean this isn't plot important? Are you kidding me? Yep. I just wasted a uh, whole exactly. summer. Like, there was like the what? there was like the village in the rain, the village in the smoke. I'm like, this shit's mad cool. What do you mean it doesn't yeah. count? I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. And you know what? Not for nothing. Like, I just said how people, um, kind of scoff at like the the big three from back then obviously one piece is still going we'll talk about it later um, <laughs> but um with quarantine happening you know we've been in quarantine for about a year now i have never seen so many pick up people pick up one piece and naruto i have multiple friends yeah. that just are breezing through naruto right now because because the idea of how much there is is daunting until you're stuck inside and have nothing to do. And then you take that <laughs> leap and you 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 watch all of it and you're like, holy shit, this really holds up. Like, this is, like, why this was so big. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, no. I, and that's just, like, a crazy thing that I've got to witness, which is really cool. Like, when you speak about the accessibility of it all, like... It, I, I just have seen so many people from beginning to end, you know, all thousand plus chapters of One Piece, all... 
500 episodes of Naruto. Like, it's it's awesome to see. Like, it, like, warms my heart. <laughs> yeah, no, Honestly. 100%. And, like, I've always been weary of, like, recommend in years past i've always been weary of like recommending people those like you know shonens and stuff that we grew up on because they yeah. are like it, it is an intimidating number like it, absolutely like yeah. have i watched like all however many episodes of dragon ball z twice yes but that's because i'm an insane person <laughs> and i love dragon ball z i've i remind me to show you my a picture of me as, as goku for halloween uh, amazing i would love to see it yeah because because like that that was like it, i i love that show so much but like yeah like it, it's definitely like a daunting task especially like back in the day even as recently as like 10 years ago where like i was i got bored one summer i wanted to watch the entirety of the frieza saga in like a week and <laughs> like i still had to like rummage through like parts of the internet that would probably blow up my computer if i did so <laughs> and like now it's all so like yep. readily accessible so like i know it I love I, it. And, and you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll be talking about a couple of those shows as I, I do have my, my notes <laughs> somewhere in front of me. Um, but, yeah, so I, I think now is, is, is a great jumping off point. And, you know, so me and Rachel have no idea what's on each other's list. There might be some overlap. And if there is, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it at, at the same time. And then we'll go there and, and I, stuff like that. I hope there's no overlap. I mean, I'm excited to talk if there is, but I was, like, trying to rack my brain. I'm like, I want to pick things that are, like, cool and, you know, have kind of a broader interest to people instead of some, like, super obscure thing. And then I was like, I have to just try and make sure I don't overlap with Coop so we can talk about, like, a couple <laughs> different things instead of having the exact same list. <laughs> no, you know what? I, I, I wasn't too worried about that because as, as similar of, of tastes as we have, I think our lists are going to be pretty diverse, um, but we're, 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 we're going to find out. And if we don't, who cares? <laughs> we have great taste, and we can we can we can celebrate <laughs> in that. Um, so, yes. and and in in typical fashion of the podcast host lying to you, uh, I actually have six shows written down because I am a, a psychopath. Um, That's okay. So. I wrote down one is actually as I like looked at my list. One of the ones that I have is actually just a manga, so I actually might Ooh. save that for the like the last recommendation thing later on smart and i might just wing it and pick something else while I'm <laughs> hell yeah see and, and that's why you're a great guest rachel because you are you've already mastered the art of foreshadowing that's that's so, oh, some, yes. someone's someone definitely you're, you're definitely a, a, a bookie you you definitely understand oh, yes <laughs> a bookie of, one could say yes. as i have 70 boxes prepared to move with just my books <laughs> wow i would <laughs> i know God, God bless you. So, all right. So, so the way that I, I figured we do this is is the classic way. Uh, we're we're gonna go um, from five uh, to to one, just starting with you know five being a show that we we like, and then going from a show a show that we like and that we swear by, and we might have multiple articles of clothing with that show on it and stuff like that. So, <laughs> uh, I'll let you go first as the guest. So, please kick us off, Rachel, uh, with uh, okay. one, your your number five. Uh, you know, recommended slash favorite anime. So I'm going to start out with one that the anime actually came out in 2019. Um, and the way I found out about it is actually, uh, you know, those super cheesy, like top 10 anime coming out in <laughs> spring of 2019 yes. things that they come <laughs> out with like six months before the season starts or whatever. Yes. <laughs> um, so I watched one of those with my best friend Onyx, um, who's just as into anime as I am, my soul brother. Big fan. Um, <laughs> but one of them on that list was Vinland Saga. And Ooh, okay. Vinland Saga is a historical um, adventure uh, setting. So it's it's catered more towards uh, adult audiences. Um, it's about vikings uh it's actually fairly uh, obviously the plot itself is not like a factual retelling or anything but the details are very historically accurate there's a lot of research that went into making it and it's actually been out since 2005 i had never heard of it oh wow before i i heard the anime trailer was coming out um so i mean this thing had been going for 15 years before they made an anime for it and the anime was actually produced by wit studios which is famous for um, the first few seasons of Attack on Titan. So Ooh. the animation is amazing. And it is, I, I saw it was coming out. I heard the little synopsis for it, which is about a young Icelandic boy who 
hears these tales of the fabled Finland uh, across the sea. And he gets kind of caught in this situation where uh, someone close to him gets killed and he sets out on a journey of revenge across his entire life. Oh, and wow. it starts with him as a young child witnessing this this tragedy that happens. And it goes, there's a lot of time skips in the series, which is really cool. But the first, you know, big major arc that got animated in this first season was him as a teenager. Um, and he is actually part of a Viking mercenary crew, basically, that is directly responsible for the tragedy that happened to him earlier on in his life. So Whoa. it's this revenge story where the person he's trying to get revenge on is actually kind of turning into like a father figure for him at the same time. And it's it's this really deep and emotional story about Thorfinn, our main character, and, and how he has to traverse all these emotions and this really hellish landscape of, of war between England and the Danish. And it's just Viking warfare all around. And the art is... It's just mwah, a chef's kiss. It's yeah. so beautiful. <laughs> and it really is like I, I jumped into it thinking it was just a, a cool idea. I mean, how often do you hear about a Viking manga? Um, no, for but real. I mean, once I once I started, I mean, I it was time like all consuming. <laughs> and <laughs> the anime, when it did finally come out, I got to watch it. I think it was 24 episodes or 25 episodes was stunning, like an absolutely stunning adaptation. And I think it's exclusively on Amazon Prime. At least it was when it aired. I don't know if it's like migrated to any other kind of streaming services as of now, but at, at least when it aired, it was exclusive to Amazon Prime. Um, and I mean, God, it's just amazing. Like truly, truly deep and dark and emotional and and full and full of action and and the second season actually just got announced. I believe it's coming out in April. So it's Ooh. a great time to kind of jump in and, and yeah, yeah. It's a great time to jump in and, and watch it if you haven't yet. I mean, you won't, you won't be disappointed even a little bit. No, so. for sure. That that's awesome. That's a show that I've, I've heard a lot about from people and like, mm -hmm. it just speaks to, for how many like mediums there are to like watch anime on because I truly yeah. had no idea it was on Amazon prime. That's why yeah, I was very, annoyed it was on amazon prime because i it's like the one thing i didn't have so <laughs> i definitely <laughs> roped uh one of my friends in and being like you have amazon prime right and you like vikings right let's just like watch this together. It's, it's okay but i just got a hulu account for the first time in 2021 so i'm way behind yeah. yeah it's totally fine so i mean he ended up loving it we're super 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 looking forward to the second season um i mean like i said these these arcs there's just these time jumps where you know last arc was him as Thorfinn as a teenager and then you know it jumps a couple of years in the future and then the arc, next arc is a couple of years in the future from that and it's just every arc is just so like different it genuinely shows like what happens when you go down these paths of dedicating your life to revenge but not in like the shonen storytelling where the power of friendship wins it's like very real life <laughs> and it's very <laughs> it's very you know it's very it, it shows you the effects of what that does to you and the people around you. So super, super, super recommend it. I'll definitely. By, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll oh, I was going to say it's just by the very talented Mokoro Yukimura too. Ooh. And like I said, he puts in a ton of actual research. The pages are just filled with like extra tidbits and facts about Vikings and their weapons and their lifestyles. So super, super, super recommend it. That's awesome. That's a yeah. that's a definitely a show I'll, I'll put on my list now for sure. So hell yeah, you'll have right. to let me know if you watch it. I one hundred percent, I definitely will. And <laughs> now, so you you recommend a show that that's very you know, it, it it's it tackles some some serious subject stuff and you know has a, a bit of a heavier tone. And I'm gonna go in the complete opposite direction for my <laughs> first uh, recommended show. Uh, it is one of my uh, favorite anime. I watch it. I think I. I I, it's really hard for me to like rewatch shows, especially it's like in regards to anime, because like once you know the ending, sometimes the magic can kind of be taken away from you. But like, uh, in this instance, uh, I've never once felt this with the show. Uh, it is a anime that aired in, uh, the beginning of, uh, I think like late 2008, early 2009. And that is Toradora. 
<gasps> I've never seen Toradora. Whoa! I want to hear about I stumped the Swami. Woo! I want to hear about it. I stumped the I stumped the Swanee. That that's this is this is this is great. Oh my gosh. Tell me. Tell me so, about it. So Toradora is a uh it, it's it's well it was originally a light, light light novel. Most of these, you know, started off as as manga or light novels and it eventually uh, get adapted into anime. Uh, it aired from uh, you know, from it, it originally aired in October of two thousand and eight, and uh, finished in March of two thousand and nine. Uh, it is produced by uh, JC Staff Co., um, which is famous for doing shows like uh, they did a second season of One Punch Man. Um, they uh, they have some a bunch of other like you know popular shows under their uh, under their umbrella like. Shokugeki no Soma, uh, Revolutionary Girl Utna, you know, some shows that I'm sure yep. a lot of people have, have heard of. And um, I, I love this show so much. And I'm just going to read you uh, the, the brief uh, synopsis here. Um, so it's about uh, the main character, Ryuji. Uh, he is he's he's, <laughs> he's got this like really like mean. He's basically got like the, the anime equivalent of RBF constantly on his <laughs> face. People are terrified of him, even though he's a, he's a real sweetheart on the inside. Uh, and his best friend, uh, Yusaka, has a crush on a girl, Minori. And um, Minori is best friends with a girl named Taiga, who has the reputation of the nickname of the Palm Top uh, Tiger because she's <laughs> small and, and uh, very angry and has a tendency to snap at people because of her uh, of, of a bad attitude. Uh, but, you know, so uh, these two, I think, uh, Ryuji and uh, his friend are classmates with Minori, and Minori is best friends with Taiga, and Taiga has a crush on Ryuji's friend. So the the show is is you know these two are like, hey, listen, our best friends, uh, you know, you have a crush on, on my best friend, and your best friend has a crush on my friend. So how about we like help each other out? And the show goes through a series of, you know, these two trying to you know set their friends up with each other. And then, you know, they start spending a lot of time together and who knows what might happen. I don't know. <laughs> and it, um, I'm the reason I love this show so much is because it is I'm a sucker for a good rom com. I romantic comedies are like some of my like it, whether it's anime or television or movies like it's it's one of my favorite genres of anything because I'm I'm a sucker for a good love story. And without spoiling, you know, too much about Toradora, the, the show takes the rom-com genre and kind of spins it on its head a little bit. It it, it takes it from okay. a different it, it takes it on a different approach. You know, you spend a lot of time with these characters who, you know, don't really like each other, but they're willing to work together for the sake of their friends. And then, you know, you see that uh, you know, friendship and stuff progress. Um it's got one of the best intros of an anime ever. It's one of my favorite ones. It's very catchy. <laughs> I'll have to look it up then. I love yeah. anime intros. So. It, it's it's super catchy and super fun. Um, and um, there's there's something uh, – let me know when you watch it because there's something on the internet called The 25 Days of Toradora. And what you're supposed to do <laughs> is when December – so there's 25 episodes of Toradora. And uh, when you watch Toradora – um, if you watch one episode a day in the month of January, in the month of December, um, you eventually like the, the episodes just kind of line up perfectly because there is a, a Christmassy themed episode and it's one of the best episodes of the show. Um, and it's, it's truly, a, a work of art. And I, I just, I just love it. Like even to this day, like, you know, the, the show is, you know, t uh, you know, 10, 11 years old at this point and it's still, uh, holds mm -hmm. up really well. Um, you know, it, it, it hits, you know, a, a couple of the classic tropes. Like, you know, they introduce maybe a, they introduce a third character in, into the mix that like might mess things up and drama. stuff like that. Yeah. There's drama. Yes. Uh, there's, there's conflict, uh, but it's, it's so sweet. It's so tender. It's, it's one of my favorite shows. Um, it's available on, you know, I'm pretty sure it's available on any sort of service you can get anime on. You can watch it on Hulu, oh, yeah. uh, Crunchyroll. I think I watched it on – I don't remember where I watched it. I might have watched it on one of those websites with viruses. But, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I highly recommend watching it. Um, yeah, it's 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 short. It. It's sweet. It's a great in intro to the genre if you're into, you know, rom com -y stuff. And it's very funny, too. It's, 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 a, it's a great laugh. Yeah. So. I, that, that there's there's my there's the it's got it gets the cooped up seal of approval for sure <laughs> amazing i will gladly watch that i think um paris is super into that my man too. I, 
Yeah, I think he used the, that tag, Palm Tiger. Like, oh, you, you're right, bit. he has. Yeah. yeah. I've definitely yeah. talked to him about this and just straight up don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely be checking that out. My, um, I have to say, my, you know, romance, comedy, slice of life genre is a little lacking. I like, I like when people fight each other with swords, <laughs> uh, magic. So I I do have to branch out a little bit in my genres. Um, so I will gladly take your suggestion and and watch it. Yeah, um, I, I, but... I, I, I like Trixie Tang. I enjoy Kissy Kissy Goo Goo and Skull Squisher. <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm a fan of, of of both. I love that. You know what? Actually, I usually end up enjoying rom coms and slice lives too. I just never find them for myself. They have to kind of be handed to me. Yeah, if I'm being honest. <laughs> um. But speaking of which, I'll kind of seg this into my next suggestion. Yes, which isn't for it. quite a rom com. It, it's uh, definitely a shoujo. It's a slice of life competition, and that has been recommended to me by my best friend uh, Noel, and that would be Chihaya Furu. Oh my um, gosh! <laughs> do you know it? I've heard, do you know how many people have told me to watch this show for years and I still haven't done it yet? It, like so I uh, sell it to me right now. I'm here for I, it. So Chihaya Furu is a show about a um there's basically three main characters. There's your uh young main character, Chihaya. Um she is wonderful, she's a little ditzy beautiful strong willed she's so smart and she's very dumb at the same time in the most wonderful way but <laughs> she meets um she has two friends growing up one who had just moved into town his name is arata and another boy that she grew up with his name is tai chi and uh when she becomes friends with arata he shows her uh a card game and that card game is karuta and Karta, played competitively, is a game that uh, mixes a uh, hundred, basically, Tonka cards. They're poem cards. And you have them laid flat in a grid shape in front of you versus your opponent's uh, grid. And the point is for you to face each other and a beaker narrates the beginning of the poem and you have to swipe the card with the end of the poem on it. Oh. And you can swipe from in front of you and in front of your opponent. And the first person to have no cards left wins. And it is, she plays, Chihaya plays with Arata. And she falls in love with the game and the, the competition of it. She is absolutely consumed by it. She, she wants nothing more than to just be the best. And the, the position of the best male and female Karata players are the king and queen. And she wants absolutely nothing more than to be the queen at Karuta. And it it, it, joy, it sounds a little silly, um, especially without, like, really understanding Karuta. I mean, I had no idea what the hell it was until I watched the show. But, um, you know, it, it, it joins these three kids. They play together in, like, a 3v3 competition uh, at their local Karuta club. And they just absolutely bond over it and you know they they get torn apart over it and it's about just Chihaya's journey as she grows and how she you know weaves into the lives of Tai Chi and Arata and and how they meet constantly outside and inside of the game and she just she dedicates herself solely to this game and it's it's her everything and it's one of those things where a lot of like sport animes have the same kind of vibe to them the whole the underdog, give your all to it. And and they're mm -hmm. all very emotional in their own ways. But Chihaya just hits on like a different note. It's very, very deeply emotional on, on how connected she is to this game and how connected she is to her team and, and how badly she wants this title of queen and the opponents she has to face to get there and the defeats she, she has to face. And it it's just really, really wonderful. I think if, if you have a competitive bone in your body you would enjoy this show like it's it's real and it's really beautifully animated as well there's i think three seasons with a fourth season to be announced um and the animation is beautiful the soundtrack's beautiful 
it, it really is just like a really you know tugs at your heartstrings kind of story and like i said don't make fun of it till you watch it because i didn't i was like card games seems so lame like so lame. <laughs> you know it's funny like, we, we, not... we, we talk junk about card games that we've both watched way too much Oh, i'm sure oh boy <laughs> let me talk about Oh in a little bit but uh, <laughs> yeah. um but no but really it, it it was not something i would have ever pictured myself liking um but i i gave it that shot like i said a stuff has to be kind of handed to me for me to give it that shot but it was and you know noel highly recommended it and we're both just obsessed with it and we get to gush over it all the time and it's it's really a beautiful show and a beautiful story yeah no that's so it's it's really funny i this show pops up on my radar like every couple of years and it's usually around when another competition show of like Mm -hmm. that ilk comes around so you know back when sports anime like really like kind of blew up on the scene i'd say maybe like eight or nine years ago um Mm -hmm. you know with a couple of shows that i'm I'm going to talk about one of them later spoiler but um (laughs) um, but yeah you know back when like those like competition based shows it's like you know it really builds uh it it really makes a great story out of like the camaraderie and like the, the the striving for for one goal and all that stuff and 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 whatnot and um, every time like a show like that comes out, people are always like, "Oh, if you haven't seen Chihaya Furu, you should you should definitely you should definitely watch that if you like this." And most recently, that happened again when when the Queen's Gambit came out over the summer. Absolutely, and, and everybody's yep. like, "Oh, if you like the Queen's Gambit, you'll like Chihaya Furu." And I'm just like, yep. oh, you know what? Maybe it's finally time." And, and I think now it might actually be finally time. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it's just a, a beautiful story, and and the competition aspect. You know, it's not as competitive as a lot of the shonen sports animes that that get thrown out there. And, like, it's hard for me to say it and have people believe me. But, like, you know, the action shots of them playing really do rival the beautiful animations in in true sports animes. But, like, the, the, the drive Chihaya has and her passion for it and the relationships she builds with her team and her opponents and the competition, it, it just strikes such a chord with like if if you are invested in any kind of competition regardless of like what kind like you you will resonate with her um where is is this streamable somewhere yes uh, it's on crunchyroll Ooh, perfect young crunchyroll yes (laughs) shout out to crunchyroll uh okay good 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 to know that's that that's another good one on my list um I, i i will definitely put it there and uh now i i gear up uh for my number four and uh, this is a show that's been when, when people ask me like my, my top five fluctuates a lot, you know, with, with new shows, mm-hmm. new genres and stuff like that. You know, you, you get introduced to a lot of a lot of cool stuff. And um, this is a show that actually hit me like right as I kind of like had my renaissance with anime. You know, I fell out of the genre for a while when I was in like high school and stuff like that just because of a time thing. And then, you know, when I got back into college, I, I started watching anime more heavily again. And this is a show that uh, that came up on my radar uh, almost immediately. Uh, again, it's another show from from the late two thousands. Um, my number four recommended show is uh, Code Geass: Lelouch of the Rebellion. Code Geass. Ugh, I, I I love this show so much. Um, so a bit of backstory: uh, Code Geass. So <laughs> te- technically. It's 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 weird. It's like it treats both of its seasons as like standalone shows, which is odd. Um, I don't understand why they do that, but it's it's a fifty show anime, pretty much. It's twenty. It's two seasons, twenty five episodes a pop, uh, and it is produced by Sunrise. And if you're an anime fan, you're familiar with Studio Sunrise <laughs> because they've probably produced some of your favorite shows growing up. Um, a couple of which you know we may or may not be talking about, but like you know they produced a lot of the Gundam series. Um, uh, Outlaw Star, Inuyasha, shows like that. I love Inuyasha so much. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's someone that spent way too much time with you. I know, but um, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, Studio Sunrise is, is is they're they're like really really huge when it comes to like producing these like these epic shows. Um, so first of all, have you have you seen the show before? So I, you're gonna hate me. I haven't seen it in its entirety. No. I've oh. only caught episodes here and there. Um so you're going to have to you're going to have to sell it to me now cuz it's it's something that comes up all the time and I have a few friends that it's like their favorite of all time. 
though I would very much like to sit down and just breeze through it all. All right, so so but... I'll give you I'll give you the elevator pitch. Um, because you know there are aspects of the show that are a little bit jarring. I think the everybody's a little bit too Jack Skellingtonly mm-hmm. because of how like long their limbs are, and it kind of bothers me a bit. But that's more <laughs> of a personal problem. Um, so. I'll, I'll, read you, I'll read you the blurb that I wrote down. Uh, set in an alternate timeline, the series follows exiled prince Lelouch v. Britannia, who obtains the power of absolute obedience from a mysterious woman named CC. Using his supernatural power, known as the Gios, he leads a rebellion against the rule of the Holy Britannian Empire. Uh, and also, oh yeah, it's also a mech anime, so there's like robot battles and shit, which is really cool. And because oh, like, mech, 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 mech. <laughs> I, I hate mech anime oh podcast canceled <laughs> we're done here throw no, it away uh, i'll watch mech anime if it's handed to me i will not seek it out willingly that's valid and you know what even like i i, I forget sometimes that it is a mech anime because like the mechs aren't like a, a huge purpose like, i i truly forget it's there sometimes um I like the show because a it's like it's an you know it's an alternate history sort of take like I watch a lot of like Quentin Tarantino films so like I'm yeah. into that sort of genre or like it's alternate history like you know the, the there's the Americas there's the Britons and stuff like that in the, in the names and stuff like that and what I love about this show is that like it's it's really good at kind of just jabbing you like right in the heart and then twisting the knife like immediately like yeah. whatever like you think that you're like you know, the show's kind of plateauing a bit and stuff like that it, it it hits a point where it's just like oh my god like this is insane um i have That's a lot of this heard. yeah like I, I, don't, I don't know how much of it you've watched but um it it, it hits there, there's strides especially in like you know the, the end of the first season uh when it's like setting up like the bigger plot for the second season um it's 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 totally worth it because it, like it, you, especially in the, like because i know the, the sort of things that you like uh like you know the actiony sort of things and all that stuff it it, it gets there uh eventually yeah hell and, yeah uh and you know again studio sunrise like has never like produced a bad fight scene in, in <laughs> from what i've seen before True. so like the fights are great the characters even the side characters are great there's this one character who has such an arc and there's this one scene that is still talked about to this day. If you've watched Code Geass, you if if, if you watch Code Geass, you know who I'm talking about, and you know the scene that I'm talking about. And yeah, it still bothers me deeply to this day. And I've, I watched this show like six, seven years ago. Um, but it, it's 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 totally worth your time. Um, I I I highly recommend it. You can watch it on on any sort of platform, and and it's topical because they announced that a third season of the show. It's supposed to be coming out this year sometime. If it has oh. come out already, I don't know where I could watch it. I, this was announced maybe like years ago, um, but it's there's a there's a a um, it was a a third season of the show coming out. So I didn't even know there was a second season. If I'm being honest, it's I thought weird. it was a one. I thought it was one of those like one one season, not even like a. It's is like before seasons were like a thing. I thought it was yes. just like a one shot kind of. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, they treat it so, like that because, like, they treat it as, like, two completely separate shows. But, like, it's literally just, like, a season one and a season two. It's, like, same. I don't know why they do it that way. It's weird. But let's just let's give, give, it a, give it a shot. Definitely. Give it a, give, give it a weekend. Give it a weekend. And, and it, a weekend. It's, it, 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 will, it, will, it, it will surprise you. It will definitely surprise you. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm super down for that. Uh, it's one of those ones that, I, you know, I – it when it gets time to like sit down and watch something i just like throw on something i've already seen and not something new so it'll be nice to actually have a list of like recommended things to to throw on instead of just rewatching stuff i've already seen a zillion times yeah no i i, I highly recommend it uh it's it, it's great it's one of my favorite shows i i don't own a lot of of uh anime on like you know hard physical dvds and <laughs> stuff like that and this is one of the ones that i do so uh, oh, if, if I if I if, yeah if I want to buy the merch for it, it I can promise you it's probably worth <laughs> it, it, it's worth your time or you just have awful taste but I I, 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 fall I into... um oh, you know. I made a, a Lelouch amiibo oh that tracks as as a as a commission once <laughs> on a Marth amiibo <laughs> that's not the character I was expecting but it fits <laughs> I guess I have capes yeah. it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. It's like the one thing that actually matches. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's, that's I don't know, it was a request, so there it is. Rachel, it's time for your number three. Your number three. We're, get, we're getting into deep territory here. 
Um, so I'm gonna take us in another turn. We're gonna we're gonna hit some different bases here. Ooh. Uh this is one where I'm sure you have heard of and probably seen. Um it is legendary to say the least. Um <laughs> It does not have a manga counterpart. It is strictly anime only. Oh, and I that I know where we're going here. Would be Samurai Champloo. Yep. Ooh. Yep. So Samurai Champloo is by the amazing Shinichiro. What is it? Shinichiro Watanabe, uh, with famously produced music by uh, New Jabez. Everyone, uh, pour one out for our friend, our dearly departed soul, uh, a legend. Um. But a absolutely legendary anime. Like, absolutely need to see it at least once in your life. Uh, I have met a single person in my life who did not like it, and I refuse to talk to that person. <laughs> <laughs> That's dramatic. That's but, but like, <laughs> truly, it is, it is borderline impossible to not fall head over heels for this anime. Uh, it, it is... Um, directed by the same director as Cowboy Bebop. Um, it has the same episodic format, whereas you genuinely only need to watch the first episode first and the last two episodes last, and everything in between is its own standalone episode, basically. Yep. Uh, you follow three characters, uh, Jean, Mugen, and Fu, as they traverse the uh Edo period of Japan, searching for the samurai who smells of sunflowers. Um, a very vague thing for them to follow, which gets them into ridiculous amounts of, like, trouble and situations. <laughs> and, I mean, it, it's just lyrical and hilarious. And some of the episodes will, will have you tearing up. It's It's just a wonderful journey. And the way it ends is, like, one of the best anime endings like I've ever seen in my life. I can't watch it without crying. No, I, like, I, I agree. Uh, I love this show so much. I did not put it on my list because it truly it did slip my mind, but <laughs> which is impossible. Honestly, because it's one of those things that like you just assume everyone's seen it. Like you just assume everyone knows it and loves it. You know what I mean? Um, it's just like uh, it, it blew my mind the first time I watched it. I was just like, I've, I've genuinely never seen something like this um it's animated stunningly um it has incredible fight scenes it has like i said hilarious moments it ties in these like real historical things that happened in the edo period um our characters are just a great misfit group to be traveling together they get into all types of shenanigans um and the conclusion couple episodes where it really ties the story together that we've been loosely following throughout all these episodes it like really gets you it really just pulls you right back in it gets down to business um the whole time with beautiful beautiful music in the background i mean this this was produced by uh suichi fat john new Jabez. it is stunning easily the best anime ost ever there's i don't think there's anything that can genuinely top it no it's it's definitely it's up there um mm -hmm. i can't i can't think of any the, like even the soundtracks that i like i swear by and stuff like that <laughs> like can't even like it feels yeah in comparison. It's, it's wonderful like it's it's truly just like one of its kind watch it once honestly just give it a shot watch it through once you don't ever have to watch it again uh but you will when you do because no. you'll like it so much but like no, just that's... just have it in your repertoire as as like a staple you know no, for sure. It's definitely like it's 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 one of the best shows I've ever watched. It's amazing. Um and it's funny you mentioned this show because the number 3 on my list was Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> A great segue one could say. Yeah, I, it's like we it's like you were in my mind this whole time this past <laughs> week. Um no, yeah, it's 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 really uh you know just to, to rip the bandaid off. Yeah, my number 3 rec show recommended uh, is Cowboy Bebop, and again, it's a show that if you talk to, I don't know, 90, even 95 feels disrespectful. If you talk to, like, most people that have watched anime, uh, whether it be from, like, our age group or, like, maybe even, like, now, because the show is more readily available now uh, than it was a few years ago, um, they've watched it, and they swear by it, and I still do, because this show is 
Uh, it, it's one of my favorite shows of all time. And yeah. again, to give you the quip synopsis, the show takes place in the year 2071, which, uh, Rachel, we're not too far off from that in reality, which is which is horrifying it's, to think about. Let's just, like, not think about that. <laughs> let's, like, I, pretend you didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, let's pretend that we're not aging. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, the show takes place in 2071, and there's a group of bounty hun- hunters, uh, including uh, Spike Spiegel, um, Jet Black, Faye Valentine, and uh, Edward, I'm reading the whole name here because it is, it is absolutely insane. Uh, Edward Wong Hao Pepulu Cheruski the Fourth, <laughs> but you can you know you can call her Ed. Uh, and oh, and and Ayn, the uh, the smartest the the, in my opinion, top tier fictional pet of all time. Absolutely, like, like he... I, Ayn's great. I have a <laughs> uh, one of the best things I got in a loot crate was uh, was a stuffed Ayn plushie that sits Aww. on my desk. Yeah, he's he's dope. Uh, who and like I, I, Cowboy Bebop definitely like reignited the corgi craze of like the, the <laughs> last sure. like ten years for sure. But yeah, like it's similar to like what 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 you just said about how uh, how episodically uh, Samurai Champloo functions. Uh, Cowboy Bebop does the same thing. Uh, the sh- you know you all you have to, if you watch the first like you know the first episode the first two episodes, you kind of get the gist of the plot, and then everything else afterwards has its own like. You know, contained story and stuff like that. Um, all the episode titles are references to like, you know, old songs and stuff like that. Uh, like you know, Honky Tonk Woman, um, Sympathy for the Devil, and uh, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody is is a is a great episode name and stuff like that. Um, the show aired in in, in 1998. Um, it was uh, originally, and I, I believe it aired through uh, Toonami's uh, Adult Swim block. And stuff like that it was one of those shows you have to stay up like really late to watch, and for good reason because it's very violent, uh, and stuff like that. But um, the the show is is beautifully uh, even to this day like still holds up animation wise. Like yeah, no, I I correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I don't think most uh, anime studios do like hand drawn animation anymore, uh, and stuff like that. A lot of it is is feels like it's uh, computer animated. Um, I'm trying to think if there is any recent examples of that, but I could be wrong on that. Um, but regardless, uh, the show is 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 beautifully animated. Um, the the characters are are great, and you know once you eventually do hit those plot points, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, the show was composed by Yoko Kano, uh, and um, the uh, jazz band The Seatbelts uh, perform a lot of the music for the series. Um, Cowboy Bebop has a, has a top five intro of all time. It's great. <laughs> I would even venture to say a top one intro of all time. I think Tank is genuinely the best anime opening of all time. It was my alarm clock for like four straight years. <laughs> it's it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Absolutely. Between the animation, the color, the music, it's brilliant. It, it's it's so good. Mushroom Samba, like top tier like anime song of all time. <laughs> so good great episode by the way um you know, like it, it's uh, without without spoiling it there's drugs involved and it's hilarious um you know what's crazy this is a very random thing to mention but when i was in uh, right after i got out of high school like the summer after i got out of high school um i used to go to concerts all the time with my boyfriend at the time and um we went to go see this like steampunk marching band it was a 16 person (laughs) marching band it was really cool it was like a super random thing that we did and actually some of his family members went too because they were like oh we saw like it was just a really cool thing that we saw that we want to go see live and we were in the uh one of the really tiny boston venues and you know it was it was cool we were jamming having a good time and then all of a sudden they were just like we're gonna hit you with something a little old here and you know just just like give a shout if you recognize it and they started playing tank and i screamed out of surprise (laughs) and everyone around me was like what the hell is wrong with this girl and i was just like do you guys not understand that we are watching a steampunk marching play play tank right now live (laughs) out of nowhere like I, oh, I can't man. even describe how absolutely shocked I was and how awesome that moment was. That like that sounds amazing. It was so random. It blew my mind. <laughs> I was popping off. They were like, "Hey, she recognizes it." And I was like, "This 
is insanity right now. <laughs> and that's like the only thing that stuck with me. I can't even remember the name of the band. I wish I remembered though, because I was just blown away by their performance. Wow. Well, shout outs to those guys. If you if you somehow find this, um, I'm a fan. Re- yeah, I wonder if I can. I'll, I'll Google's my best friend. I'll figure it out. There you go. <laughs> that you'll you'll find a way. I, I believe yeah, in you. It's it's genuinely just a phenomenal anime opening like phenomenal yeah like and all the beats of the show are 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 just so great like spike is such an iconic character absolutely Um, he's still like to this day like one of like a very popular like cosplay character at conventions and stuff like that um and he's just such like he's such a a great protagonist and like all the characters in the show are just fantastic you know they all there's everybody has an episode if you like nobody feels like they get gets shafted too hard um it's been so long since i've rewatched it and i hate myself for it because i just i just love this show so much and whenever i introduce people to anime this is a show that i show them um because i i always like listen it's a little bit older uh so like if you if you like this you'll like a lot of the newer stuff um it's not that long you know 25 episodes is about the standard length of like not just most anime but like most television shows so like you know, you'll 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 get your fix out of it, and like you know, you the the overarching plot is like not like super complicated or anything because you know they they spend a couple of episodes on it in the, in the beginning of the series, and then it's a lot of like standalone stories, and then they eventually you know wrap it all all up nicely. And if the worst thing I can say about your franchise is like the movie adaptation, like isn't that great? Um, then it's fine. I've watched the Cowboy Bebop movie once and I didn't like it, but that's just me. Yeah, I I very just the one thing that pops into my mind when I think of the Cowboy Bebop movie is the how the Naruto and Neji fight in the tuning exams is like the exact animation ripoff of, <laughs> of right. the fight in that movie. And it's just like seeing I always just recall the side by sides and I'm like, you know, whatever works. Whatever. Yeah. Um... Works harder, not I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's again also topical. They uh they just wrapped production on a live action Netflix adaptation of cowboy bebop and, and i am looking forward to it yeah no oh same. my god i'm legitimately excited very 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 excited for that netflix low-key low-key netflix adaptations kind of smack they are fucking awesome like they throw a ton of budget into those things and they keep them nice short easy simple they don't draw anything out it's kind of goaded so we will have high hopes for that one did you did you did you like the the Death Note adaptation? Oh, dude, come on! <laughs> I mean, TV shows, dude. <laughs> oh man, dude, dude you dude. just had to fucking. I got a good string right there, and then you said, yeah. "Let me just pour some salt in her fucking wounds right there." <laughs> oh man, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna take this potato chip and and choke on it unfortunately oh, wow one of my favorite anime scenes of all time oh it's legendary it's so good um <laughs> shout out to death note everybody should watch shout it out to death note. um but yeah that's that's my that's my number three choice um you can watch it on on pretty much any platform um i think it's it's on like every major website and yeah whenever the whenever the live uh action adaptation comes out uh i'm definitely gonna have you back so we can just geek about it for an hour so yeah, gladly. Watch it flops and they're just yeah. like so awkward. <laughs> it's just us dunking on it for an hour. All that shit you were just talking about. <laughs> Netflix shows being good. Yeah, insert that one Whatever. meme of Ar- of Arthur with his jacket up real high. That oh my god. Seeing. Oh man. But we're moving in the top two territory now, Rachel. So uh all give right. us, I I, so... I I've, I've been expecting one show for a while, but please continue. Um So this this show is a well-known, well-loved show. Um, and I included it today because I am actually watching it again with a couple friends, and it's their first time watching it. Um, and that is Hunter Hunter. Oh! And this is a beloved shonen um, show and manga. That is serialized in Shonen Jump. It's a staple shonen um, that completely turns shonen tropes on their head. And that is a well-known thing. Um, 
there's a lot of jokes about this show where people call it <laughs> hiatus sex hiatus <laughs> for good reason. Um, the show, the current airing of it started in uh, 2011. This actually came out in 2000, or no, it came out in 1998, I believe. And there is a 1999 anime adaptation that didn't get that far. But it was restarted again in 2011 from the beginning with new animation and new voice acting and everything rebooted. And it stopped um, once it caught up to the manga and they were a little frustrated and they just um, couldn't, they didn't want to put any kind of crazy filler or anything. So they just stopped it because there were no new chapters coming out. Um, (laughs) Yoshihiro (laughs) Tagashi is known for his ridiculously long hiatuses. Um... (laughs) And it's frustrating to a lot of fans, but that doesn't take away for, from how great the story that is currently out is. Um, so I have a friend that wanted to start up watching Hunter in earlier in quarantine, and he started, and he was blown away by it. Um, each arc is just such a flip on like normal shonen tropes where it, it takes something where you think it's going to go one way and it goes the other, or it plays out in a way that seems very like normal and, and very like, yep, that's par for the course. And then you really think about it and you're like, holy shit, that was kind of fucked up. What just happened there <laughs> mentally and emotionally. Um, I think that Hunter uh, has one of the best shonen arcs of all time in it being the mm-hmm. Chimera ant arc which is something that is widely agreed upon and also widely debated at the same time. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I genuinely, I genuinely think it has one of the best shonen arcs of all time Um, that I I can't watch that arc without bawling my eyes out. Um, And the pure genius behind every facet of that arc is like mind blowing. Um, And yeah, I mean, it's hard to, talk about it like in crazy length because like it's so popular and and you know everyone knows about hunter but it's if it's not something you've watched yet check it out um there are tons of great uh video essays on a lot of the characters and a lot of their morality and a lot of the dynamics that happen in hunter and it, it really opens your mind to like how not like a shonen it is like underneath its surface and i think that's really cool i think uh a deconstruction of a trope and a genre is is a really cool thing to to dive into uh especially with something as popular as hunter uh the anime is pretty good uh like i said unfortunately it just kind of cuts off at the end of one of the arcs and the manga did continue into like two and a half arcs past where the anime stopped and those are 100 percent worth reading um they were the the current arc that the manga stopped in was is has the potential to be absolutely brilliant um so it's super worth reading super worth watching um my friends are currently enjoying it right now um and i was like you know what we're watching it right now we're gonna talk about it today (laughs) you know what it is now time for me to expose myself i've never seen hunter before yeah, you know what? There's a surprising amount of people who haven't. And which is crazy because it's one of those like really, really big Shonen Jump names. Um, it's one of their best selling series. And even though right now it's been on its longest hiatus, I believe. I believe it's going on three years of hiatus. Um, I believe Tagashi suffers from really bad back issues and health yeah. issues. Um as I, I believe is the the consensus of like what happened. I do think he he is um his wife is actually the creator of Sailor Moon. Um oh yeah and I've, I've read that before. Her, yeah, I think her name is uh Naoko Takuchi. Um and I know she has been actually learning his art style so she can continue drawing for him so the story can t- continue without him having to put his health at risk. Um, which is really cool if that ends up being true. I think that's really fucking awesome. Um, I know a lot of people get very angry when they talk about Hunter and how often it goes on hiatus, which I think is wildly unfair um, because it is a single human producing this story. And if 
their health is at risk. It's not, you know, just because you want a story to happen doesn't mean you should like be up someone's butt and at someone's throat. Of course. When it's like putting <laughs> their health at risk. So when it does eventually come back, which I do have faith that it will come back, it always has, you know, in the past. So uh, when it does come back, I will gladly look forward to that day because, like I said, where it ended in the current arc that's that's being aired and shown in Jump, uh, it, it, it was really leading up to be a brilliant arc. So it, I'm very much looking forward to it. But until then, you can watch that anime, have it like hold you over till then. Uh, it's about a hundred and what is it, 160 episodes, I believe. Yeah, so it's, a, it's, 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 a it's, it's, it's pretty chunky. It's a chunky one, but you will fly through it because um, it it just like sucks you in so fast and like you're just hooked on it. You're hooked on the characters. Uh, you're hooked on the story. There's just like so much to digest. And like I said, a lot of the things that happen seem really like normal and like like normal shonen stuff. And then you really start thinking about it and you're like, holy shit, how did like all of this slip underneath my notice the first time I watched this? And like now I'm like... <laughs> everyone's morally fucked up and like there's some crazy shit that happens and they just acted like it was nothing and it, it's really good it's really worth it. if you like something that's gonna like kind of open your mind to like the deeper workings of a shonen that's definitely what i suggest yeah this is definitely a show where i've like you know i've been like in between shows and stuff like that and like i'll always like scroll past it and i'm just like ah someday <laughs> like yeah. I'll, I'll, it's like I'm just forever procrastinating it, and eventually, totally fair. Ev eventually, I'm I'm gonna get to it because all of my friends yeah. have like I f I feel like like I could trip on the sidewalk and find a friend of mine that has watched this show <laughs> recently, and they're just like, yeah, it's goaded. So yeah, and I, uh, I mean the the coolest thing about it, so it's written like I said by um, uh, Yoshihiro Tagashi, and Tagashi's previous work is Yu Hakusho, uh, totally one of my all time favorites, like god tier show, um, but just as with you Hakusho in Hunter, the real driving force and where Tagashi shines as a writer is with his antagonists. So that is like the coolest part to me is like you get to see these really crazy antagonists and they are just multifaceted. Like you can't not agree with them on some things, but you know they're evil. And it's like he just writes brilliantly when it comes to that. So those those kind of things will hook you in once you actually do start it. It's worth it. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Uh, it's a great show, and I think it, it's it's available on like all the major platforms, like we like we mentioned. Yeah. So it's 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 yep. it's definitely readily uh, uh available, and you know I gotta say, you know I uh <laughs> I I I, I dropped the bomb on on you right there by saying I'd never watched uh I've I've never watched you know Hunter, and now I will in turn drop a smile bomb because you again segued perfectly into my number two show. Yeah. Yu Yu Hakusho. My favorite. Oh, I love Yu Yu Hakusho. This show is so good. I struggled very greatly with like, like my number one is, is pretty solid. Um, but my numbers two and three were like, I, I, has a, I struggled a lot with these shows and I have such nostalgia for Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, and again, I'll give you the, the Wikipedia very uh, <laughs> shitty synopsis. It's like the worst synopsis of all time. And uh, the series concentrates around Yusuke Yurameshi, who after death becomes a spirit detective, the protector of the living world against supernatural threats. Uh, it's awful. But uh, just 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 trust me on this one. So again, the uh, I have such nostalgia for this show because this is one of the first mangas I ever read because it was available in Shonen Jump. And I yes. think the the first Shonen Jump I bought had chapter one of I think or I think it was like the first like three chapters of Yu Yu Hakusho in it. Oh, and that's amazing! Yeah, I was I was obsessed. I yep. I was I would the the concept was really interesting to me. It hooked me. Um, it's uh it was uh, originally produced in 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 Australia by a studio by the name of uh Periot, I believe. Uh, yep, per Periot yeah. Studios. Periot Studios, and in America, it was uh, licensed by Fundimation, which is, again, uh, licensed probably a lot of your favorite shows under the sun and stuff like that. Um, it's 112 episodes, chunky show, for sure, but um, it's totally worth your time. Um, and, and like you said, the characters in this show are are so well-written, but the villains especially, like, yes. sinister, great villains guess... in this show. Tagashi, it's where he shines as a writer, like truly where he shines. He makes such compelling 
antagonists. It's a, it's like hard to even call them villains. You know what I mean? Because like, yeah, a lot of them have such compelling reasonings for what they're doing, and like, a lot of them are evil, but they're just antagonists at their core, just the opposite of your protagonist. You know? Yeah. No. It's it's I I agree. And like, um, the the characters in the show are are great. There's there's tragedy. There's loss. The action is absolutely fantastic. And you know, we talked about Tank being a top one anime intro of all time. <laughs> Smile Bomb is a top uh, two please. anime intro of all time. It's so good. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. And it, what was I saying about uh, Kamara Ant being a top five shonen arc of all time? Dark Tournament might be the best shonen arc. Of oh all no, time. Dark Tournament might be one of my favorite shonen arcs of all time. It's 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 fucking ridiculous. It's so good. It, it is literally, you know, people like to credit Dragon Ball with the, the birth of the tournament arc, but the Dark Tournament is what bore the tournament arc like yeah, that was the blueprint of the tournament arc yeah the world martial arts tournament walked so that you know <laughs> that that, that yes. the dark tournament could run and amazing stuff like that. uh it's great and it's just as a side note uh i've actually met chuck huber twice at anime conventions who is the voice of uh Hiei, and also the voice Love of android it. 17 <laughs> which is funny yeah i was uh, uh, with funimation comes a lot of uh repeating voice actors so a lot of, across a lot of old school funimation you can hear many voice actors across the same like couple animes which is really fun <laughs> yeah no it, it's great um this uh, again this the show is it, it's chunky but like you you don't even realize it i mm-hmm. own the first season of the show on blu-ray i've been trying to find the other ones else, elsewhere and again i don't buy shit unless i like it a lot um and it, this the show is is so great those those first few arcs are are real uh, enticing and stuff like that, you know the characters of Yusuke and Kuwabara and 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 Botan. You get like really accustomed to these characters early and, and stuff like that. And just like mm-hmm. watching, like I like just watching Yusuke, just like you know, like learn more about his powers and 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 you know just grow as a character is like so fun to watch. And oh my god, like I love this. Sh- I love this show so much on all fronts. Yeah, uh, I mean, like easily, just like a staple shonen like truly yeah. just a staple staple shonen um and hold on let me look something up super quick because i also think that yu haku show has one of the best english dubs uh in anime i i think it's like one of the most like heartfelt well voice acted dubs because you know there's always like the subverse dub discourse going on and you know like what you like (laughs) but but there are truly like good dubs and good subs and like Yu Yu Hakusho is just simply one of the best dubs like truly yeah no this cast is littered with 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 greats um I like again I mentioned uh uh uh, Chuck Huber before um but you know there's uh Christopher Sabbath is, is all over this Kyle Herbert's all over it uh you know uh Laura Bailey goat yeah like, yeah she, my girl Keiko. <laughs> if listen if my girl's not willing to cover herself in water and drag my dead body out of a burning building we are not like like it fails in comparison like that is yeah. goals yeah and and it's uh justin cook i believe is yusuke and i think he just really just nailed yusuke like as a character and it, Sometimes I think that's really hard to do, and I think he just blew it out of the water. He carries it, like, on his back. It's amazing. Yeah. Definitely and, one of my favorites of all time. Yeah, no, w- w- 100%. Um, Justin Cook, he, he's all over Dragon Ball Z. And, and Dragon say, Ball he's Z Raditz? Well. Is he? Yeah, he's Raditz. He's evil <laughs> yeah. Boo. He's, he's like three versions <laughs> of Boo. It's wild. Like, what, a, what a range. But, but yeah, as Yusuke, <laughs> like, it's one of my favorite dub performances is, is him as Yusuke, like, truly. So, yeah. I no, mean, what a what an amazing choice! Yeah, no, for sure. I love this show uh, dearly, and again, this is a show where I didn't get to watch it until um, it started airing on like the afternoon blocks of Toonami, where I was like, "Oh, they can like censor this show!" Like, I thought they curse and stuff in it. Like, that's wild. Like, my mom would never let me watch this. I yeah. vividly remember the uh, of the Toonami advertisement where you just watch Koenma getting like spanked by like a demon. <laughs> like, it's like one of like oh the, my gosh, yeah, it, it's um, one. Of, it, what was I going to say? Yu Yu Hakusho is actually the first anime I ever watched on my own, like my own time through those oh, wow. sketchy websites. 
um, <laughs> because I had a friend who it was it was her favorite anime, and she was like, "Oh, well, you should watch it." And she just sent me like a link that had a list of all the episodes, and I just watched them in a row. It's the it's like the first anime I ever truly like watched and binged on my own on like my old school family computer at like two in the morning across the summer <laughs> vacation so oh man super I, good uh, memories hold it super close in my heart yeah this is definitely a show like that for me too it was actually <laughs> it might have been one of the shows where my parents had to put like a timer on the family computer because <laughs> i was watching like anime too yep. late so like they're like all right one o'clock kyle you gotta come upstairs and i'm just like oh yep. god why do you guys hate me like come on yep yep it was it was Yu Hawk Show and Inuyasha were like my first go tos that I ever watched like on my own like that like just binged them so very very close in my heart those two. See, um, it's good good overlap. We're having good overlap here. Yeah. And now yeah. We're, now we're approaching Rachel. We're here. We're at the number one show that we both love, and a show that we'd recommend the others to love with us. So without further ado, what is number one on your list? Number one on my list. She's been mentioned. We've we've spoken her name in this podcast. <laughs> and that is the greatest story ever told. One Piece. Yeah, I was waiting for this. <laughs> yep. Um, don't let anyone tell you anything other than this is the greatest story ever told. It is the greatest adventure it like i said there have been people who were daunted by it and you know goffed at what a thousand chapters how many episodes nope they gave in they gave it a shot and they are in it for fucking life now one piece is number one in my heart in in fiction it's one of the best-selling fictions of all time as far as physical copies go um, and that goes for like any work of fiction. It's one of the best selling ones. Um, has close to 500 million copies sold of physical volumes, which is an astronomical number. Um, it has spanned 23 years. Uh, we just crossed the thousandth chapter this past January. And when I tell you, it gets better and better and better and better it continually tops itself like it it's indescribable how this is the king of of anime it is the king of now it's the king of the past it has been the king and it will stay that way until its end genuinely probably past its end um it is the story of straw hat monkey d luffy and he has consumed a devil fruit, which has given him the power of uh, the Gomu Gomu no Mi. He turns into a rubber man, which sounds and is just as silly as it sounds. <laughs> um, truly, it's, it's, it's crazy. But he gathers a crew of pirates, um, the Straw Hat Pirates, on a journey to become the Pirate King and to find the fabled treasure, the One Piece, left behind by the last Pirate King. And... It is so good. I can't even explain truly how good this story is. It 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 starts so innocently and then it just comes in with a bang and it does not stop. Arc after arc, like chapter after chapter, it delivers. The story is amazing. Oda is so good at planning and connecting dots hundred across hundreds of chapters between characters between places between events it's things that that happened in the the hundredth chapter matter in the 900th chapter things that happened in the first chapter are going to be relevant like at the end it's it's just it's it's just non-stop it it doesn't stop it is worth a thousand percent worth the journey to like start this show and you don't have to watch it. Um, I recommend you read it. Uh, there are fan projects that um, actually fan color every single page. Oh, wow. Um, and they are up to, I believe, chapter eight. Last time I checked, it was like 860 out of 1,007 chapters are in oh my God. Full, full color. And it's an absolute treat to read it in full color. Um, it has a very dedicated community to that. Um 
the animation in the beginning, you know, it's old school 90s animation. Uh, so it, it, if you like that style, run with it. It works. I mean, it's not the, the greatest, but it doesn't matter because the story loops you in so hard. And by the end, where they are right now, they have actually caught up to the current arc of the manga, which is leading up to be one of the greatest manga arcs of all time, genuinely, Wano Kuni Country. It, it's the animation has ramped up it it can easily comparable to any of the weekly anime that drops you know your attack on titans your jujutsu kaisens your whatever is dropping it's easily comparable to that right now in terms of quality and it's it's just <laughs> if you're scared just try it just give it a <laughs> shot and you will you will be hooked like it's not even funny how fast and quick and hard this hooks you in and keeps you hooked in so I, I mean, I'm a I'm a newer One Piece fan. You could say I started in um, 2014, I believe 2015. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah. So I mean, I'm only what six years in, barely five years in. Um, I actually only started it because Naruto ended. Naruto ended in <laughs> I believe it was no November of 2014. Yes, I believe um, you're correct. I. I had just like a gaping hole in my heart and all my friends <laughs> were like, read one piece, just read one piece. You'll love it. And I was like, no, dude, that's like not my jam. Like it's just never interested me. And then finally it was just like, just give it a shot. Just give it a shot. That's all instant, instant hook, instant favorite. Like I haven't shut up about it in like maybe five years, straight, <laughs> which I'm sure everyone is really thrilled about, but like truly phenomenal, like, like historically monumental story and it will it will go down as one of the best works of fiction of all time genuinely i um no I, i'm number one i'm happy to have finally given you your soapbox to talk about uh one piece at a time capsule on the internet forever um so that I, i'm i'm blessed to have given that to you and um yeah. listen i've once upon a time i've i watched one piece every week and i and i and that same shonen jump comic that had the first three chapters of yu yu haka show had the first three chapters of One Piece in it, and I—I bet, I, I bet that Shonen Jump is worth so much money. <laughs> it might be. I have, I have to check my closet to see if I legitimately still have it. Because if I do, oh man, <laughs> I might be able to pay off those student loans. But <laughs> um, no, like, and listen, just watching, uh, like it, I, it was so like, as a kid, it it, it blew my mind. Like, you know, watching, uh, again, like Luffy, like. You know, uh, you know, eat eat the devil fruit, and then he does the uh in in the in the manga they I believe they called it the gum gum the gumu gumu pistol is what I remember from the first chapter, yep. and uh, yeah, I thought that was the coolest fucking thing. I'm just like, yo, he's he's stretchy, he can punch people, he can't swim, I can't swim. Like this is this is perfect. This is great. And yeah, I I remember I watched uh you know One Piece again was was big on the it was you know. <laughs> Uh, four kids and stuff like that, you know, on the, oh, on the kids WB yes. arc. Yeah, it was. Oh, boy, yeah, that, that's I, a, I'm, a good one to laugh at. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm old. Uh, dreaming. Don't give it up. But uh, <laughs> I uh I I think I watched all the way through like the Water Seven arc, or whatever. One of the and best then, arcs of all time. Phenomenal. It's great. And then I, you know, I became a, a busy preteen of ants Absolutely. and stuff like that. And I and then I and I fell off. <laughs> um, but even now, like, listen, I have friends who who read it like you know like you or like minded people that they read it every week they they watch it every week um one of my fondest memories as someone that's a pretty like surface level one piece fan i went to go see film gold uh in theaters with my friends Aww. a couple of years ago and it was it was amazing it was one of the the coolest things i've ever seen and even me you know, a surface level One Piece fan, like, was able to to revel and enjoy like the things that popped up in that movie. Because I'm just like, oh my god! Like, I remember more of the show than I thought I did. I it, yeah. it was it was incredible, and I would love to like it, it's it's something that I've talked about like a while, like you know, a bit. And every all my friends tell me the same thing. They're just like, just read it and watch the arcs that you like and stuff like that. Yes, and, that's. That's generally what I recommend to you. And that's what was recommended to me when I was reading it. Um, and it was read it through. And then you go back and you watch the scenes, just the scenes that you want to watch. And I was like, you know what? I'll do that. And that's what I did. And so I actually haven't seen a majority of the anime until 
my best my best friend who has been my best friend since i was five years old um told me that he wanted to start one piece and i was like that's crazy and he's like i'm gonna watch it and i was like you don't have to do that you can just read it and like i'll tell you which ones are the good ones to watch he's like no no, no i, I want to watch it like i want to just do it <laughs> and i was like okay he's nuts and then maybe like 70 ish episodes in I ended up watching just like I had him come over and we watched like a chunk of them together. And I was just like, I don't know who I let tell me that the anime was not worth watching because like it is worth watching. <laughs> and like, I, I, I've watched it with him ever since we're, we're nearing episode uh, 700 and like, that's like a lot. <laughs> No, yeah. And I didn't I didn't realize how much we had watched together because it just goes by so fast. Like it it's like you just get so sucked into it that like I didn't even realize we were like that far along. And like it's so worth it to watch it too if you really truly love it. But like to to start yourself out, to dip your toes in, read it. It's so worth it to just read it, you know? I will I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make an effort to try to do that because I, I see how much my friends revel in it. And even the bit that I enjoy, like the, the the characters are are great. I as as a kid, I was obsessed with like wanting to be a chef when I was older, and Sanji. so like like so like Sanji is like a character that, like I I I love him. I love Chopper. I love Luffy. Like all the all the straw yes. hats are, are 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 great. I mean, oh my gosh, they just weevil their way into your heart and stay there, <laughs> and it's like oh god like i i like you just you just cry when they have their moments you know because it's just so emotional and you know they've been through so much and and i don't know it's just it's just my number one easily easy peasy number one like you know i i have other personal favorites that i love like like yu Hakusho and naruto and berserk and and whatnot but like to recommend to other people just just do it just take a, a fellow anime friend's word for it and just go for it just start you won't regret it i trust you i'm gonna jump feet first <laughs> in and once i'm obsessed i'm blaming you for this i i'm this is gonna be on you, record it's your fault you won't blame me you'll be like wow i need every <laughs> piece of one piece merch probably in the entire world ever <laughs> <laughs> i definitely have a straw hat somewhere in my closet i'm sure i'm very I'm jealous of that <laughs> no you're not a loser please i i want one <laughs> you can have mine um oh my gosh so that that's great and um i i love that and and listen this is what these shows do to you they 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 tug at your heartstrings and um for my number one uh this is a show that when i was first introduced to this show i didn't think i was gonna like it because of it it overlaps with another medium that i do enjoy uh my favorite anime of all time still to this day after watching it like uh uh, six or seven years ago uh is kuroko no basket i love this show so much it is one of my favorite shows of all time it is my favorite show of all time like i waffle back and forth with a lot of favorites like i said you've, you've heard a bunch of my favorites and at times and points in times they've all been my favorite but kuroko just like i it is magic in action um mm -hmm. so again the synopsis of the show uh, it circles around the generations of miracles who are a group of basketball players that all attended the same middle school together. And then they all grow to, uh, you know, they, uh, all graduate. They all go to different high schools and stuff like that. And, um, enter your main protagonist, um, uh, Kagami or Kagami Taiga. Uh, again, two Taigas in my top five wild, um, but he's a, a, a talented uh, basketball player uh, who uh, grew up in America, actually. Uh, and, and I'll get back to that in a second. <laughs> but um, this uh, he attends the school. And he's like, oh, yeah, who are the – he's the typical, like, shonen protagonist. He's just like, oh, yeah, I could beat all these dudes, blah, 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 blah. And then he teams up with uh, the titular character, uh, Kuroko Tetsuya, um, who is the Phantom Sixth member of the Generation of Miracles. And as you, you know, like typical with sports anime, um, it follows the tropes of, of hardship, of, of growing as a team together. You get introduced to the other generation of miracles who are all like busted. And uh, again, I, one of the reasons I love the show is that in motion, it's beautiful. It's done by production IG. 
who does a lot of work with sports anime. Uh, another one of my favorite shows being Haikyuu. Uh, they've done Psycho. The oh yeah, I uh, oh, love Hi that show. Oh man, I I, I love th I love those boys so much. Um, Me too. Me too. <laughs> Come on, go on. But um, yeah, they've done uh other shows like Guilty Crown, Psychopaths, and fun fact, they did the Pokemon X and Y anime, which is one of my favorite Ooh. Pokemon animes of all time. It's great. Really? For yeah, for Pokemon standards and anime standards, it's great. Uh, it it's 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 great. And it, again, the show looks great in motion. Um, the production really steps up in like the in like the later two seasons. Uh, the reason I love this show more than like other sports anime is because of like the the, the fantastical aspect of it, where like the generation of miracles are like these like you know like five star like basketball talents and they all essentially have like superpowers, which is like fucking wild and it's just so fun to watch. Um, the characters you get introduced to are are phenomenal. The character of Kuroko is one of my favorite anime characters of of all time. I own multiple pieces of merchandise from him one of which i purchased from you i oh, uh, one of my favorite amiibos i've ever made uh he's one of my favorites he sits on my desk every day um <laughs> uh i have multiple figurines i have posters this is this show is just encompassed like so much of my personality and um there's there's great growth between you know uh kuroko and and kagami uh, you know, as a twosome, and then you know, you get introduced to the other members of the generation of miracles who are all like the power creep is insane. Um, there's really great English in the show, which is like <laughs> it's like it's painfully bad, but it's so bad I can't stop watching. Um, because they really focus on like Kagami's time in America, and oh man, it's whoo, it's bad, but it's 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 funny. Um, but yeah, th this show is it's it's it came to me at like a really good time in my life. Like, you know, I had a lot of off time. I had just like stopped going to college, so I needed something to like fill my time to let like not make me sad. And it, this show just it, it hit me at a great time in my life. Uh I love it. I didn't think sports anime as a genre would, would intrigue me because I like sports in real life. And like I didn't think uh, mixing church and state was going to work for me. Uh, but I was dead wrong because I love this show so much. So, uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Can you guess who my favorite is of the Generation of Miracles? Oh, man. Okay. I got to think of who, like, what your trope is with uh, with anime <laughs> boys. Uh, is it is it the blonde one? Kise? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. I give up. Who is it? It's Almine. He's uh, my yep, favorite. That... <laughs> He's so cool. He, he's like so so cool when i was watching it i was like this dude is fucking awesome yeah no he's he's busted like a street ball a street ball it's, it's, <laughs> it's so it's so it's so good like i said the english is is awful but um the characters are great and that's why you stick around for for shows like this and like all of the generation of miracles like get their time mm -hmm. uh to shine the backstory into like why they you know became so like uh, resentful of each other is is a great journey and again tetsuya number two top five dog in anime he's he's adorable <laughs> yeah he's so cute yeah who doesn't love a husky that wears a basketball jersey like that's amazing i know it's so cute <laughs> i know he's adorable um yeah that's a great show no i it, it's one of my favorites um i i recommend again it, it's 75 episodes it's it's a little bulky but it melts by because you're just uh it's it's so good and the the pacing of it's really good like there's again high is a show that i i that i it gets compared a lot to because you know they they came out around the same time and are from the same production company and stuff like that um the high cues kind of deals a little bit more into like the realism sometimes <laughs> like all the time yeah it's definitely more of the like emotional journey between hinata and kageyama um which i i prefer haikyuu over kuroko even though I enjoy Kuroko a lot, like when I watch it, I, like I, I still go back and watch like some of the scenes from some of the games from Kuroko because it's just like so cool. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> like Kuroko is what made me think like, wow, sports animes are cool. Like I definitely thought they were like kind of lame before, <laughs> but but I definitely super changed my viewings after I saw Kuroko. Yeah, no, I'm I'm in the same boat. And they get like I watch I watch Haikyuu to like feel something because of how like emotional and like stressful it is. Uh, yeah. and I watch Kuroko to like feel that same high, but I just want to like turn my brain off and eat junk food for like 
five yeah. episodes. Because like Love once it. you like once you get into like those later episodes, it's just like it's like ridiculous. <laughs> like some of the things. No, it really is. It's so good, but it's so cool though. That's like the thing. It's like it's 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 an anime. Like it's like a true just shonen like craziness, cool animation, like nonstop action anime. It's it's awesome. Yeah, no, it's awesome. But yeah, it's it's available on Crunchyroll. Uh, and, and and the English dub is actually uh, licensed by Netflix. So if you're into that, uh, we do not discriminate in this house. You can, if you want to watch the dub, go right ahead. It's on Netflix. So I didn't know that. I've never seen the dub for that one. I haven't either. Um, Netflix isn't like my first choice when I go to like as much as I enjoy <laughs> the Netflix adaptation of things. Like I don't think to like go to Netflix to watch anime all the time. Um, just because it's like never at like the top of my brain. But mm-hmm. you know that's neither here nor there. And Rachel, we did it. We were managed to somehow keep this podcast under seven hours. Um, so somehow, I guess there's yeah. definitely a part two brewing. I feel it. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll definitely. We'll, I'm like, it's it's gonna happen. Wow, I could have talked about this or that or this. So we're gonna we're gonna have a part two electric boogaloo in like a couple months. I feel it. I'm 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 so game. I I, I would love <laughs> to have you back again. This has been a, a, a treat for me. Uh, you know, not just for for the listeners, but because you're one of my favorite humans on planet Earth, and I'm happy and to have been able to sit down no. and, and gush about this with you. Oh no, you. Oh, no, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, listen, we, we're reaching the the end of our time here, and listen, we we do this uh, again. We I do this every week. You know, uh, we we each throw in a, a piece of media that we you know that we've been consuming and like we want the other people to consume alongside with us uh so rachel as my guest uh you have the floor what's your uh last second recommendation for the listeners so uh i'll throw in two really quick one's one's a manga and one's a not uh (laughs) or like okay hold on so we we all know it's hype it's awesome it's new everyone geeks about it every week you should all go out and watch Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, that's been my go-to week-to-week anime. Um, I've read the manga. I'm caught up. It's fucking awesome. Uh, Studio Mappa has just absolutely pulled no stops animating this. It is hilarious. It is, like, heartfelt. It is so good with the fight scenes. So good. <laughs> the OST is god tier. It is amazing. Uh, and that's been my go-to week-to-week Crunchyroll thing. I'm sure it's been everyone's, but you know what? Why not? If you haven't, just just watch it. And then secondly, as I am a avid book reader, um, I will give you all a recommendation for a show that's coming out on Netflix. It's a Netflix-produced show uh, coming out in April based on uh, two young adult books combined into one, and it's called Shadow and Bone, based after the uh, Grisha trilogy by um lee bardugo and six of crows duology also by lee bardugo uh so that is going to be a really really cool awesome netflix show coming out in uh i think april 24th so not anime but super worth checking out if you're around Ooh, okay i'll put that on my list of things Uh, whatever it comes (laughs) like i've i'm such a a horrible book reader and people have been (laughs) i've I've been trying for years but but this yeah no everything about it the trailers have been awesome the casting has been awesome it's a it's a ya fantasy uh so it's kind of in the same vein as like uh like an elemental avatar-esque fantasy world kind of so there's like element benders it's gonna be really cool super worth checking out if you're not into anime don't know why you're listening to this podcast but like (laughs) we suffered through two hours already so here's a normal show recommendation i guess that's amazing. Yeah, dude, that, that that's very true. Um, so, uh, my recommendation this week is going to it, it's going to play into something that I haven't watched yet, um, because I got home and immediately uh, started recording a podcast. Um, everybody should go watch Wandavision. It just finished. Uh, it's it's it was it was really really good. Um, it was uh, I'm a I'm a a Marvel consumer through and through. I am a slave to the mouse in all in in most regards. Um, everybody please go watch WandaVision because the Falcon and Winter Soldier is going to be great. And yeah, if you're a Marvel fan, look forward to that. As for not, as, as for, as for anime recommendations, uh, I've been watching, uh, the new Pokemon anime, Pokemon Journeys, uh, before I go to bed every night. It's been, it's been, it's been campy. It's, it's fun. It's stupid. 
Uh, I love it. And if you can somehow find it, I'll recommend it again. Uh, the Pokemon XY anime, like not even just for Pokemon anime standards, but for anime standards, gen- excuse me, general, a great show. So everybody should watch it. Uh, Serena is queen. She's a great character. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's going to be that's going to be all we have uh, for this week's folks. So, Rachel, uh, thank you again for, for joining me on this long journey of just us oh. gushing about the things that we love. Um, thank you for letting me not shut up about this normally people are like oh my god is she done <laughs> let, me mute let me mute her on twitter real quick <laughs> you, are, you are you are welcome to come back on my show anytime and just talk endlessly about the shit that you like because oh, that's exactly I the gladly, type of energy i need here gladly hit me up in like a month and we'll do part two easily I'm down. We'll, we'll make it happen uh so where can the <laughs> lovely people uh find you rachel um you can find me on twitter and Twitch, and Etsy, at Okamiswan, O-K-A-M-I-S-W-A-N, and my tag is based after One Piece, so if you got the reference, you got it. Yeah, that's true, and I I, I didn't talk nearly about it as much. Uh, Rachel is a phenomenal uh, artist. She, I bought so many of your products, and <laughs> you know, I'm not just saying this because I'm your friend. Um, you, you do such great work. And I every every product I purchase is fantastic. I use the Apollo uh, magnet I bought from you months ago I every mean, day. It holds up all of my favorite uh, fast food menus. Um, amazing. Yeah. Great great work he is doing. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a, he's a good he's a good burb. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll definitely uh, you know have all your stuff in the YouTube description uh, below. And of course, you guys can find uh, me at a. Uh, uh, at uh, at Koopa NJ on uh, on Twitter and Twitch across platforms um, and all that fun stuff and again thank you guys you can for supporting us you can uh, find us on the show on Twitter at Cooped Up Pod and email us questions at uh, Cooped Up Pod at gmail.com I'd love to, to interact with you guys we're almost entering the double digits soon it's wild thank you guys for being all around on this crazy ride. And, uh, folks, we will be seeing you guys uh, next time. So have yourselves a wonderful night and take care. <laughs>